Okay. Okay. I hope I'm on. Yes, I think I'm live. My computer just gave me an error signal, but I think it's an internal thing, not an external thing. So hello, everyone. I'm Becky Goldsmith, and I want to thank you for joining me today live. I'm really here. I'm really here in Sherman, Texas today. And um, thank you for joining me for my time out. Today, I want to tell you again that what is behind me is the Birds in Toyland quilt. This quilt uh, is available not yet as a book. I'm teaching it as a class. Um, again, I've taught it three times. I'm teaching it once more. I don't know how many more times I'll teach it live online. Oh my goodness, there's the cat. Um, <clears throat> but this next group starts September 9th. I would love to see you there. You know, it's really fun. The people who've joined me so far in our live meetings, we really have formed a community. So it would be great. It would be great if you joined. Um, and it's a really fun quilt to make. Okay, today I'm talking to you about my recent trip to New York. And the reason I'm talking about the trip to New York is because we're coming out of a pandemic slowly really slowly and many of us have not traveled in a long time this was my first trip since my first real trip on a plane to somewhere where i wasn't going to a condo and just staying with family this was a trip where i was going out into the world um, i haven't done that since february of 2020 which is very unusual and some of you are in the same boat, so let me tell you what it was like. <laughs> you know, I've, I've got slides. <laughs> I have to admit, when I was putting this together, I thought, oh, please, don't, don't let this turn into one of those horrible slideshows, you know, <laughs> that go on and on. No, it's, I hope it's not going to be like that. So what I want to tell you is I fly from DFW Airport on American, almost always, because that's the biggest airline out of DFW, to wherever I'm going. Last week, it was to New York. <clears throat> coffee is always the first stop, and every single coffee place was mobbed. It took a long time to get coffee. So number one, if you're going to travel and you want to get coffee on the other side of security because you can't take it with you, schedule your time for that. I swear to you, it took half an hour and I was not alone in finding that to be true. But I scheduled in the time for it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is my gate. You know how we've been told that there are crazy people at the airports and on planes. I did not run into that. I didn't see anybody being crazy. Um, this is Terminal D at DFW. There's five terminals. This is one of the nice ones, but they're all pretty nice. This was half an hour, 45 minutes before my flight. I did, in fact, have a full flight. So when it was time for us to group up and get closer together, again, people were not ugly or anything. You are supposed to wear masks in the airport. And by and large, people are compliant. Um, you can see that the one guy right there that I kind of quietly caught him with his mask down, I don't know that he was ever compliant. He ended up not making noise on the plane, so I'm assuming he wore his mask on the plane. <clears throat> this is where I found out something about myself. Uh, because I'm vaccinated and it was a big space, I really wasn't that worried about his breathing. I wouldn't have loved it if everybody was unmasked, but okay, this one guy, I did not lose my mind. Except that I'm kind of a rule follower. <laughs> and I, I kind of wonder, as I, was, as I was resisting the urge to just tap him on the shoulder and ask him to pull his mask up, I was wondering how many arguments in different places start just because you figure if you're following the rules, everybody should. I resisted the urge, you'll be happy to know. So I did not tap him on the shoulder and maybe we should all not tap each other on the shoulder. Um, so flying is just like it was. I mean, you go up in the air, 
you wear a mask, not that big a deal. You can lower your mask if you're eating or drinking, and it is to be hoped that you put your mask back on and don't cause a problem. In general, what I have heard is that the air filtration system on airplanes is really very good. So again, I didn't worry that much. I kept my mask on unless I was actively eating or drinking something. I looked out the window because I was sitting by the window. New York looked like New York. All right, let's see here. Now, New York City, that's not a great picture, but it wasn't a great picture then either. I took it with my phone, it was a selfie. New York has just instituted a show your vaccine card to get in places and they have an app for that and I downloaded the app and let's see I was there not this week but last week and the app looking at went into effect toward the end of my stay so at the beginning of the week a week ago I didn't have to show it but later in the week oh yeah yeah I had to show it to get into the folk art museum and to get in where else? Somewhere else. I, I had to show it and I did not mind doing so and it made me happy to know that I was in there with people who were vaccinated. <clears throat> All right, so walking around New York. I can tell you that right now, I it, it, there weren't as many people as I thought there would be because when I booked this flight, it was when things were opening back up and you know, people were booking flights. And so <clears throat> I figured there'd, there'd be more people. Now, granted, I took this in the morning and the city was not all the way awake yet, but <clears throat> the sidewalks were not particularly crowded. And I think it's two things. I think it's right now with the resurgence in cases, people are staying home a little bit more. And New York in the middle of August does not have a reputation for being the best time to go there, right? I mean, it was hot, although the weather broke for us, and it was really not that hot and not miserable humid either. So we were lucky on that, that in that respect. There were places, though, in the city and certain times of day when there were people on the streets, and New York is a walking city. So <clears throat> there was, you know, there were people. So... One day we walked through Times Square. We saw the naked singing cowboy who wears underwear. Um, he was interesting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, Elmo, I think we saw Elmo briefly. We looked at the moving billboards. It was great fun. It surprised me that so many people are wearing masks on the street in New York with as few people as there are. I really did not wear a mask on the street. It's not required. And I'm a believer in the, you know, what goes out goes up into the air and away. Now, I could be wrong, but um, it seemed to me unlikely that I would be breathing in anybody's germs. But for those of you who are particularly nervous, you would not be alone wearing a mask outside on the streets of New York City. All right see here now dining you say what about eating indoors at those restaurants where where you go well personally speaking right now I'm not going to be eating inside a restaurant with my mask off for a while I'm, you know I'm gonna wait just a little while and when we were in New York they have outdoor restaurants and so if you're looking to travel you might before you go because everybody wants to eat when you're on vacation right if you're not going to stay in a place where you can make your own food then finding a place where you can eat outdoors at nice restaurants is a good thing now again this is not when when the restaurants were full as i was walking on the streets um, typically morning early afternoon and i'd see a nice outdoor cafe i'd take pictures because they were nice and they were all so different. Um, so we did eat here twice. This is, I should remember, Blackstone, Blackstone, 
Blackstone Coffee. It's a really wonderful place. You can see the Guggenheim just barely in the distance down the street to the left on the other side of the grill work on the window. This is a cafe that's part of an Episcopalian church. It's housed in like the small chapel that we that's off of the main part of the big church cathedral. It was really good food and really nice coffee and their outdoor seating and service was very nice. Um, very, very nice. We had avocado toast and coffee two mornings and it was primo. It was very good. Uh, but other places, it's really funny. People decorate their outdoor dining in all kinds of unusual ways. And this is a place that serves crepes. They had gluten-free crepes and it was really good. They had other stuff, but we were there for breakfast for crepes. And I have no idea what's up with all the Nutella thingamajigs up there. I thought maybe they'd have lights in them, but I don't think they did. I think they're just decorating with the plastic things. I don't know. Anyway, it was interesting and the crepes were fantastic. For those of you who are curious and might be in New York, this is on Lexington, somewhere around 90th Street, maybe a little farther north, maybe a little farther south. Okay, whoops, I want it to go forward. There we go. Now, <clears throat> I got to see Jeff while, while we were there. He joined us for something every day, and we sometimes had adult beverages, and it was really nice. <laughs> it was... It was quite nice. It was a vacation, right? Um, so, yes, there were adult beverages outside, and there was ice cream. You could eat it outside. You could eat it inside. I did both. Um, now, I took this picture mostly because it was interesting to look in at something that was actively being renovated to see that the roof above us had a lot of bricks in it. I'm not too keen on thinking about having bricks overhead in these big buildings, but there you go. There were bricks. Um, but there is a fair, there are a fair number of empty storefronts. So there's that. There were a lot of businesses that were also open. And, you know, New York City is still New York City. There's lots to see. Broadway's going to be opening soon. Um, it's, it's worth a trip. <laughs> I sound like a travel agent. Don't I go to New York? Well, it's good. There's other places that are also good. This is just one place. Now, I go to New York to visit my son. I went this time to also meet up with my friend Amy. I went for museums. I went for all these things. But I also talk to strangers. I really do. <laughs> Jeff says, I talk to strangers and I have about a 25% success rate. And by that, he means about 25% of the time they might actually want to talk to me too. But Amy's observation was that I have a somewhat higher success rate. <laughs> so these two people, and I didn't take pictures of their faces. We stopped because their shoes were so cool. And these are designer shoes. They're shark shoes. You can Google them and find them. And the young man and woman who said, sure, take pictures of our feet. They were fun to talk to. This was outside the Metropolitan Museum of Art, where we also went in. And, you know, there's mask mandates in, um, in New York. So going in the museum, yeah, you're going to wear a mask. For those of you who, let's face it, we're a divided country. There's a lot of you out there going, I don't want to wear a mask. Well, I don't mind wearing the mask, especially if wearing the mask gets me into the place I want to go. Is it harsh of me to say that those of you who don't want to wear a mask and don't go, well, you're not crowding up the place. That's terrible, isn't it? But there is that. You know? Sometimes the museums can get overly crowded, and they really weren't. So that part was loads of fun. Um, so the Met, the Met was open. And if you're planning a trip, and this is probably true everywhere, if you're planning a trip and there are specific places you want to go, double check to see when they're open because the museums 
they have weird hours. So, you know, some are open and it's not like they're all open and closed on the same days. It varies widely. There was um, the New York Historical Society. They were closed all the days we were there. They opened, or they're only open on the weekend. Uh, where else? Oh, just all kinds of places. And in fact, what I'm finding out even here in tiny little Sherman, Texas, there are places that have more unusual hours now than they used to before. So again, if you're going someplace extra special on vacation, make sure that the places you want to visit are going to be open when you are there. All right, so in the museums, it was really fun. I got to see paintings I haven't seen in a long time. I love this particular vase of flowers by Van Gogh. And the photographs in this room at the Met were really great, but the woman's clothes on that wall in front, the lady in front of it was equally fun. And as I said, I like to talk to strangers. I also like just watching people. So <laughs> half the fun at a museum is watching the people in the museum looking at the art. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So the other thing that was really exciting this time was that, <coughs> man, that's harsh. I, I hardly ever get the coughs when I'm live online. The other thing that was really fun were the number of female artists <clears throat> whose artwork I'd never seen before. You know, it's not like museums don't have art by female artists. I think it's just never been hung so much. And everywhere we went, I noticed more than I'd seen before. I had never seen Florine Stettheimer's work that I can remember. Maybe I have, but I sure don't remember it. And they had four large paintings hung by her, all framed in this way. And can I just say, that is a great frame. One of my biggest pet peeves in museums are the frames. Because you look at so much of the art, <clears throat> and it's, you know, the famous old oil paintings, and they all have these heavy gilt frames. I would seriously like to know who picked those frames. Because sometimes the frame enhances the art, and sometimes it's just way too much. Way, way too much. In this case, the frames, all the frames on these four paintings that she had that worked in the series, it was all this same frame that is a great frame and it was perfect for her art. So that's a personal thing that, that I look for, but it, but it was nice. Okay, Amy and I took a taxi to the Cloisters. Now the Cloisters is a museum attached to the Met that it's monasteries, one or more, that were brought over, gosh, I should remember, in the 20s or 30s by very wealthy land barons here um, and plopped down on the north part of the island. So it's out of the way. It was a 20, 25 minute hour, 20, 25 minute taxi drive up. We didn't think about how we were going to get back when we made the ride up. We just went. Um, it was nice. It was interesting. I, I enjoyed it. Um, seeing the people was nice. The art was interesting. Would I go back? I, I don't probably think so. It was, again, interesting. Um, the Cloisters gardens were really nice. And what I liked, and Lorna, if you're watching this, I took this picture for you because look at that rattan cage. They had tomatoes growing in things kind of like this. It was really cool. And the woven fences they had down below, way better than plastic or chicken wire. This, you know, their fencing was really interesting. Uh, and the plants were good too. And the museum setting was very nice. Saw the cloisters, it was good. It was good. But if you are going to an out of the way place, it 
is not a bad idea to think about how you are going to come back from that place. Because one thing that's also true in New York are is that cabs and Ubers and Lyfts, it's changed. Um, Ubers can be much more expensive than they used to be, and it, it varies. It seems like the swings in time and location and prices are a little more extreme now than they used to be. Um, we ended up Ubering back, but there's also a new app in the city, and I don't know if it's in other places, called Curb, in, and it calls cabs and maybe private cars. Anyway, it was interesting and somewhat less expensive at certain times of the day, and it worked, so just so you know. Uh, we went this is the first time I've ever been there. Um, first time I've been to the Bronx. We, Amy and I went to the New York Botanical Garden and there is an exhibit of Yeyo, Ye, Kusama, Kusama's giant, beautiful, happy polka dot sculptures. And there's a mirror room. It was wonderful. Again, it was really great to see the people. This was a well-attended exhibit. Not super well-attended, but well-attended enough. If you are anywhere in the New York City area while this is on, definitely go there. And the thing about the exhibit, this is why you travel, right? Seeing those sculptures outdoor in nature. This reminds me a lot of the kind of applique I enjoy and enjoy doing. And the way she uses polka dots, it's really fantastic. And the colors she uses and the juxtaposition with nature. It for a quilter as a as or as an artist or just as somebody who's interested in looking at pretty things, this is worth seeing. And that's why you want to get out and about even if it makes you a little bit nervous. If you can overcome the nervousness, it's really good to go. Um, the other thing was, this is another reason why I like going outside of my own area. Maybe these grow somewhere in Texas, but darned if I know where. I don't know that I've ever seen that particular flower. And I should say in here, although I do have big fancy cameras, I took all of these pictures with my iPhone and it's not even the brand newest iPhone. So, so water lilies at the Botanic Garden. Um, okay, it needs to go. There we go. And this, these were the cone flowers and I grow cone flowers, but my cone flowers never look like this. And do you remember that fabric? Can't remember who designed it, but it, it has cone flowers and that sort of iridescent color at the end of the seeds, there it is. I had no idea coneflowers in nature looked the way that fabric does. I thought, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, let's see what else. Okay, we also went to the High Line. For those of you who don't know, there are, the High Line used to be actual railroad tracks. There were some signs up there that said you should wear a mask. I think they've been up there a while because nobody wore masks. And maybe if it was more crowded, it would make sense to wear masks. Um, but in this particular instance, as widely spaced and as open air as it was, there you go. Now, am I a scientist? No, I am not a scientist. So there's, you know, this is me saying in the open air, when I'm that far from other people, I feel pretty good about not having a mask on. But that's me as an individual, not as a doctor or a scientist. Okay, so the High Line is great fun. If you have not done the High Line, um, I recommend it. There's this thing, it's brand new in New York called Little Island. And it was a wealthy individual's idea. And he funded, as far as I know, a lot of this and it's, each one of those little things goes up and blossoms open and holds dirt and I don't know what else because it's planted and it's wonderful and there will be an event space. There is an event space in there. When we were there, you could just walk it, but um, every now and then I'm sure you could go to a performance 
in that event space on Little Island. And if you're curious, you can Google, you know, you can Google all this stuff. So Little Island, that was fun. Never seen that before. It was great. We went to Mood. Mood was fun. I saw two cranky people on this trip. Really, you know, really cranky people. One was a lady shopping at Mood who thought she wasn't getting a good enough deal. She was really cranky. And then we did see one taxi driver out on the street, down, down around the High Line, who was having an unhappy interaction with his, the person in his car. We did not hang around to see how that turned out, nor did I take pictures. But on the whole trip with all these people in the big city, that, that was the biggest crankiness we saw. Central Park, if you go to New York, you should definitely walk Central Park. And one of the coolest things about the park is how different it is from bottom to top. So this is me just kind of guessing. It starts around 60th Street and ends above 100, maybe at 110th, somewhere in there. And it's not super wide. It's not miles wide. Maybe it's not even a whole mile wide. But the paths, there are so many different paths through Central Park, and there's so many different kinds of environments inside the park. Every time we walked it, we saw something a little bit different. So this was one of the fountain, fountain areas, pond areas, inside the conservatory garden on the kind of far on the north and east side of the park. I'd never been there before. This is another place in there. And I took this picture not just to give you the idea of what's blooming, what, what New York looks like here, but of the people. So different times, you know, different spaces inside the conservatory garden, the different benches might have more than just this one guy on it. But in general, it was not super crowded. And where I live, it's hot. And our flowers are looking really tired. In New York, the flowers are looking pretty darn good. And I'm sure that there's things that aren't blooming now, but there's a lot of things that are blooming beautifully. And, you know, they have groundskeepers. They have people who take care of all these plants in the different parts of the park. And, at the cloisters and at the botanical garden. But these are some of the prettiest plants in all three of those places that I've seen in a long, long time. And, you know, lilies. I never really thought about them being spiky down on their petals like that. Some parts of the park are more crowded than others. Uh, this is the Bethesda Fountain, and it's underneath a bridge. It's bridge on top, walkway below. And this too is in Central Park, which is amazing. There's a variety of bodies of water if you haven't been there. This is the one where you can rent the rowboats. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So it can be great sport to watch people who have rented a boat who've never rowed a boat before. <laughs> And, and I, I resisted. I had to really resist hard because where I took this picture, we were on a bridge where you could look down and over. And I didn't take the picture of the family where the little boy was seated facing the flat end of the boat and rowing the wrong direction and pushing the flat end of the boat where he wanted to go. You know, typically, just as a heads up, if you're going to row a boat, you put the pointy end in the direction you want to go, and you put your back to that so that you can pull more efficiently and move the boat that way. <laughs> Jeff says it really is great fun to watch, to watch the people row the boats the wrong way. <clears throat> That's harsh, I know. Okay, and then we walk through here. This was the steamiest part of the city we walked in. That was in um, Central Park again. On my last day, as I was driving in the taxi that I called, I got in the taxi at 6 a.m., 
No, it was an Uber. That time it was an Uber. Got in the Uber. He drove me down. I can't tell you which bridges those are. I should be able to, but I cannot. It was a beautiful sunrise. And this is a, whoops, really not that great of a picture, but there was a rainbow out the side of the, you know, as I was on my way to the airport, it was very nice. I flew in and out of LaGuardia and LaGuardia is having a lot of construction. The terminal I went to, I think was B, it's looking pretty good. And then I had to walk a good ways to where American takes off out of in D, it's less pretty. But in the pretty part, I took this picture because it was so much fun. The, the Strand is a, a bookshop in New York. I want to say it's up in Brooklyn. Um, I hope they're still there. They were, you know, it was a little iffy through the pandemic, but it was very nice to see them open at the airport and their beautiful display of books. It was just really lovely. Uh, let's see. And then I flew home on a plane, just the way I flew out. It was exactly the same. Landed at the airport, got off the plane. There you go. So I am happy to tell you that three days later, now this is funny, it's definitely overkill, total overkill. But I got on a plane and I was careful. I was careful the whole time. Flew home on the plane, still careful. But I have an eight-year-old grandson who comes over to the house. I have people in the family who really should not catch COVID. And I have a husband who's just today started teaching in the classroom with students again. He's a college professor. Everybody's masked, but still, COVID tests. He has to test negative for COVID pretty often to stay in the classroom. Steve picked me up. We both wore masks in the car with the windows down. He drove me home. I got to live in the house. He went somewhere else. He went in one of the little college places where he got to stay for three days until I got my negative test. I got my negative test. Steve is home. We're all good. It's a win. Uh, so, travel. Should you do it? I do it again if I wanted to go somewhere to see something maybe in particular not just random travel but if you got a good reason to go and if you're careful there is not a particularly good reason not to go I don't think this is me again not a scientist would I be careful of course I would I was would would I enjoy it? I did. I can tell you I did. Um, everybody's got to do what they got to do. If you go somewhere, enjoy the people. Try not to be one of the cranky ones. Try to leave the judgment at home. Roll with the flow and have a really great time. Enjoy what you see. Enjoy meeting new people and have fun. Okay, so I hope that was, I hope that wasn't a boring travel log. If it was, you can, of course, turn, turn it off. Of course, you didn't get that part till the end. So there you go. If you have questions, it's something you'd like me to talk about on timeout, you can email me at becky.pieceofcake at gmail.com. I will be back next Wednesday in person at two o'clock. And I know what I'm going to talk about already because I have a friend, Anne, Hi, Ann, who is working on the wild rose block in A Walk in the Mountains. The leaves on those roses really are scary. They're hard. And I keep telling her she can do it, but she'd like to see how to do it. So you guys get to see too. So it's little tiny leaves, little tiny serrated leaves. I'm going to show you how to do it next time. So until then, I hope you have a good time. And may you have many happy stitches. Thanks for watching.